I'm excited for our webinar as always. Oh yeah, exciting stuff. Hello everyone. Hi Hello. Rosie. All right guys. Welcome Thursday again. Time to get started. That's yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so, yeah. Roger, go ahead. I thought this was really exciting news. I'm sure you'll agree with me. Uh, Sixth Street is somewhere that you know everybody flocks to. We get we get so many visitors in Austin each year that come down here and want to experience the city. So you're going to experience a facelift downtown. So I know Rosie particularly doesn't like going downtown because <laughs> of the smell and everybody's just drinking and there's not really a whole lot more to do down there than to drink and have a good time. So uh, there's a company here um, that is going to, it's called Stream Realty Partners, and they've bought uh, several millions of dollars worth of property. I think this is going to be like a $500 million project, 500 to $700 million that they're going to spend on 6th Street to revamp it. So there'll be more things to do down there, like shopping, eating, and uh, we'll still have those bars where you can grab a drink. So for those of you that like to do that. Um, Wait, can you, I say yeah. something? Please do. You know what's please. really funny about this? Okay, uh -huh. guys. Um, if if anyone knows me and knows I like trash reality TV, that normally brings no value to a conversation. However, <laughs> they were in Austin on a trip, okay. and there was a lot of construction going on. They were downtown Austin, I believe. They were staying at Hotel Zaza or something like that, mm -hmm. um, or maybe Fairmont. I don't know. And they were, they were saying, oh, wow, there's a lot of construction going on in Austin. That must mean a lot of businesses are going to be in Austin. You don't just have construction places where there's nothing happening in a city. And I thought, yeah. wow, for once in my life, Housewives is actually saying something that's relevant. <laughs> <laughs> Rosie, what are your thoughts? I was really curious to know when I, when I pulled this up. I think um, this is an economy where a lot of investors are moving in. What we see on the surface is not what it is in the back. And um, we see a lot of ownership swap hands. I was in a commercial training today and um, they were talking about how a lot of office buildings are now being converted into a residential. And uh, a lot of uh, high rise buildings are basically now more of a mixed use buildings where you are able to have a residence on the top and retail at the bottom, some office space at the bottom, workspaces. And um, there's a huge transition in the workforce in general because they were talking about how people are not wanting to go back to offices, right? I bet we all know friends who are being called into the office for productivity. I think State Farm had made a huge call out and there was a big quit. Everybody quit at once. They were like, we're not going back to the office. And the people who are really benefiting from it are recruiting firms because recruiting firms are like, yeah, now I got a whole new batch of people to replace to new, new jobs. Ah. So I feel like um, this is like a reflection of basically uh, owners swapping hands, new tenants, new ownership. And anytime we swap tenants or swap ownerships, there is new renovations coming. And uh, I'm excited for it. You know, uh, to me, I think real estate is... Um, is a decision that you make. It's not um, not a real estate is not something that I feel like um, um, I, now I'm going to be very unpopular to say that, uh, and you probably would be bringing it in the conversation later. I think a lot of people just like to know about real estate mm -hmm. rather than own real estate, right? And um, it's my biggest pet peeve with people when I see people know so much about real estate and yet they don't want to do anything. So yeah. uh, it's a it's a biggest struggle that I feel in a real estate industry period. You know, mm. they all know what's good and great, what's coming, what's not coming. And yet they think it's OK to just sit back. So uh, for me, I think this is great. I hope it creates a way for people to see that there is new opportunities and they should act just like these owners acted who decided to buy this piece and transform it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the conversation you're going to hear a lot is from people that we want to maintain the culture in downtown and that we don't want to change what's good and what attracted people here in the first place. But quite honestly, if anybody's gone downtown, uh, you know, on, they call it dirty six, 
And so for a reason. So I think that once this renovations come into play, that maybe some of those people won't mind coming back to the office because there's more to do in that area. <laughs> what no, do you guys sure. think? You know, a bunch of restaurants, they shut down um, after COVID. My husband's um, firm is downtown and he complains all the time. There's nowhere to eat. They have like an option of like four or five different places and there's nowhere for them to go to lunch anymore. I really appreciate you saying that, Brie, because I know Roger and Deep, they both like uh, going downtown. I don't know. I, I all of a sudden developed a huge repulsion from downtown. There's a part of downtown I will visit and the one I don't even want to look at. And if that means I stay back home and they go, I'm okay with it. And um, it's just like uh, every time I went on a dirty six, either you are seeing ambulance chased, right? Somebody's chasing an ambulance. Somebody got hurt. Somebody's driving a scooter and they fell off and they have a bloody nose, right? Like they're getting drunk. So I understand it's fun, but what's fun about being hurt all the time, right? You don't know who's going to come hit you because they're so out of control. And yeah. uh, when it comes to food, um, I think it's a, it's a novel idea that I'm going for a dinner downtown, but you hardly can find a parking spot. Um, the quality, like if you walk into the same restaurant in the morning versus you walk there at night, you get to see how clean it really is, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think um, I'm very opinionated about downtown. So. Yeah, Rosie's a, a second street girl. <laughs> 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 so... Uh... Uh, yeah. But there's a lot there's if if we look hard enough, there are some really good places that that I enjoy going to. And now, of course, you're going to pay the price because, you know, those are I think those areas are sucking all of the traffic, foot traffic. And a lot of people do want more of this, we can tell. And so now maybe we'll start to see a little stabilizing or a little more a love spread throughout the the downtown area. And uh, after all, this is what brings people down here. This is what we're famous for is Sixth Street. So mm -hmm. if we can represent ourselves in a, in a nice, wholesome way, I think it'll go a long ways because there's shift in consciousness, you know? People are becoming healthier. Um, more and more of my friends are talking about, you know, giving up drinking and living a cleaner life. And so uh, maybe 20, 30, 40 years ago, that wasn't going to be the conversation. And even prior to that, I think, you know, uh, our may favorite movie stars were smoking on screen and now we we become more conscious and aware of those things so m maybe this is like just where things are supposed to evolve to right i'm sure you guys agree yeah okay so there was another headline in here and it's just a bunch of verbiage up here it's about the national housing price taking making an adjustment and how prices have come down uh i wish i had pulled out the uh, reduced prices and showing you guys how aggressive some of these price declines are and uh, how now's a great buying opportunity better than ever before. So um, I will make that available to the listeners upon request and we can just show you all some of these numbers are just really outrageous, but it's a good thing. You know, it's a, is the time to act is now. Um, so this is just what the condition is now. And then we saw the renderings, how it's supposed to look here in the future. Uh, just giving people more an opportunity to walk up and down the streets and they have someone cycling and more families out here. So I can't wait to see what that means for, for uh, downtown Austin. Uh, also, there's some government contracts that have been given out to two Austin companies uh, for uh, uh, the defense contracts, right? Uh, so one of them is Firefly Aerospace. We mentioned them last week on the video and they're doing some construction. They're a Leander or Cedar Park based company. And uh, they also have a project that they're doing a little further out past Liberty Hill. And I'm thinking that's a launch pad of some sort, but because there's a lot of warehousing and machinery that's set outside, so time will tell. Now, you know, whether or not they're launching from there, I would be really curious because you don't want to end up owning a home right next to a launch pad. And now you're hearing rockets go off. And I don't know to what extent those rockets will be going off. So that's something for investors to think about. Now, that is uh, eight or 10 miles out of town in a small town called Briggs. And so uh, I'm sure a lot of our investors were keeping them in other regions of you know maybe larger metros 
But if you are looking out there, then I would caution you to find out more, figure out what's going on there. And uh, But I thought it was good news because if we're getting defense contracts, we already know what Raytheon has done in Dallas. Raytheon and all these big companies, Texas Instruments, they have defense contracts. And it spurred a lot of uh, economic development in those areas. And so if that is an indicator of what might come here, um, maybe, you know, kind of getting a feel for, well, maybe even talking to the city about sound ordinances and everything else and how frequently they're looking to launch so that you're not impacted by these things. Um, also, we have uh, the Texas Children's Hospital that's set to open, and I'm really excited about this because uh, Texas has continuously uh, improved their healthcare systems, which was much needed. A, a few years ago, you would have heard a lot of, you know, things about how we're maybe like struggling in that department or we're needing more infrastructure. But now just where I live right here, we have two hospitals that have come in uh, close to me and these are world-class hospitals. I think there's only a handful of them, maybe four or five of them uh, of this sort across the state. So um, this is currently a $485 million project. Uh, believe it or not, here on Lake Creek, and I saw a hosp I saw a helicopter landing over here for maybe some emergency care or something, and that really made me feel good about what's going on in the area and how we're able to provide better and more care. Uh, so, people who that are looking to move into the area are looking for these types of things, right? We want these amenities and these facilities for ourselves, and that I would imagine to bring more people into the area because it's available. And so if you are looking, Rosie and I are big components for, and Brittany too, big components for uh, finding uh, living near hospitals, uh, doctors and uh, nurses, are the, you know, they're really well-paid salaries. These people want to live in nice places. They, they tend to take care of the properties that they own. And um, so if you are looking for properties near hospitals, I think those are really good assets. Uh, reach out to us and uh, ask us specifically about this and we'll see what kind of search we can pull together for you. Roger, so, guys, huh? Sorry. so this hospital is going to be off of Lake Creek off of 45 and 183 and then they have that new hospital uh, Dell Children's that one that opened up mm -hmm. uh, that off one's of, uh, off of Avery, Avery Ranch. Ranch. Yeah Avery oh, Ranch. Wow. Yeah. So I really get excited about this stuff, uh, Bree, because um, I think it, it I think it does spur economic development, and uh, that's really exciting to me. So, what do you guys think about that so far? The news headlines were a little light this week, but that's to, I guess, it, we're getting geared up for Christmas and the New Year, and so this is uh, this is just what's basically what's going on right now. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's really cool that there's another um, children's hospital that's going to be coming pretty close, right, to the other one. I mean, that's going to be, that's like not even a five minute drive from the other one. And both of them are very relatively large. So that just tells us that there is so much growth happening that we need more. We yeah. need, we need, you know, the support and, and more. So, I mean, that's a good indication. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those are the two things that I'm really excited. Actually, I think everything we touched on the headlines this week is super exciting. I mean, the fact that we're having defense contracts in the area. Again, if you don't know, Texas Instruments is a multi-billion dollar uh, company. It has great facilities in the Dallas area. They have a lot of market share and they're able to uh, employ so many people. And um you know, if we're getting anything like that in there, that's good news. Our downtowns are being revitalized. That's excellent. And then hospitals and healthcare. So it's touching across several different spectrums of space, you know. And, um, but uh, you guys, Rosie, did you have anything to add here before we move on to the next section? Um, I was just trying to show real quick. Um, I was going to share my screen real quick um, mm -hmm. from what I found uh, from Dallas Fed. Um, mm. or how the economy is doing so oh, let right. me know if y'all can see my screen can y'all see the screen no we can yeah okay i'm gonna maximize this real quick 
So this is um, from Dal Dallas Fed. I bet you all can just have access to this as well. Um, so they're saying the slowing Texas economy remains on track for soft lending. Now, what does this mean? Overall, Texas employment growth takes up in third quarter. So our employment growth is going up. You know, we grew 3%. So 104,000 jobs were added in the third quarter compared to 94,000 jobs that were added in the second quarter. Uh, now, Texas wage and salary growth picks up. So Texas in general, the employment is going up. The wages are going up. And you can see that um, right here, you know, Texas uh, wage salary growth picks up in the third quarter as well. We're not looking further down. We're starting to go up. And uh, one of the things that we hear in an investor group all the time is that flat is the new high. Yeah. You know, so if you're flat and you're not going further down, it's a good sign. It means you're going back up. So that's positive. I have something to add here, actually, if you go back up. Um, sure. So here you'll see that, you know, the U.S. economy, uh, the U.S. Uh, salary growth is higher than the Texas salary growth. Mm -hmm. And um, so some people could look at that as a positive or negative, right? And I really think it's a positive because what it's indicating is we have a larger uh, blue collar workforce. And when I was looking at a few reports about AI and how some of these industries will be replaced, the construction and manufacturing jobs are the most secure. And so we don't know here in the next 10, 15, 20 years, how these, how these angles are going to, you know, how they're going to swing. But I would say that construction workers, uh, according to the Dallas Fed, actually, they did a report on it showing that that was one of the most uh, secure, you know, segments of employment. So yeah. it's really encouraging to me. And I think that's exactly what you just said. Service industries are slowing down and manufacturing stabilizes. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we are looking at Fed service of, you know, composers of service sales revenue is the dotted line. I don't want to confuse guys too much on that. But all I want to say is that look at Texas manufacturing survey production, you know. Um, so how is that performing? It's pretty loud all across. It was down right here in 2015. But if you look at it in 2021, 2022, it's uptick right here. So this oh. is the. Uh, and this is a good sign that Texas is inviting a lot of... Uh, also, um, just industry. one last thing real quick is, I know if we look at the reports, we're going to see a lot of uh, mixed news. And right now, it's really important to understand that this is we're going into the fourth quarter. And going into the fourth quarter, the economy tends to slow anyways. And so what these news companies do is they, they release all this like flood of bad news. Mm -hmm. uh, if you will, uh, but we need to keep a healthy look on it because this is a, a pattern that occur reoccurs every year. Uh, during the fourth quarter, we start getting like uh, trickles of bad news in, but you really need to be able to look past all of that. Of course, it's going to slow. It's the fourth quarter. So they're usually comparing it to the quarter before, and that doesn't make any sense to do that. Yeah. And um, I think this is a really good one for our investors because one of the things that you're going to be competing against the home rentals is the uh, new apartment complex supply, right? So yeah. this is, they're saying the new apartment supply slows down in Texas metros and rental rates are pressured. This is good. We have had way too many apartments available for rent, which killed our rentals for the single family and duplexes and multi-units. So if it is going to slow down, if you look at it, you know, I know there are so many colors up here, but Austin is red, Houston is orange. So if you look at it, um, Houston still has some supply, but Austin has gone down in the supply overall. And, um, and now I apologize when I say supply, I mean, how many permits are issued, right? So yeah. permits are less issued, which means permits is a direct reflection of the future construction. And they're saying yeah. that multifamily building construction permits soared in 2022. And after peaking in 2022, around 10,420 units per minute. Yeah. So in yeah, October of 2022, of just this months. like a year ago, 10,000 units were permitted and new multifamily construction permits in Texas fell to 6,000 units, which is pre-pandemic level, right? Yeah. Now, a lot. one of the things that I want to kind of help people understand is that Look, Houston rents went up 2.7%, while Austin rates fell 2.8% year over year, right? 
Now, this is reflection of how much apartment complex were ready to be built and released into the market. Now, uh, a lot of people look at building construction like, wow, this is such a cool building they're building. Guys, like when I sit across land developers, property developers, multi-unit developers, they're three years in motion. It took them three years to arrive at that point. So yeah. the permits issued and the construction happening, we got to remember it doesn't happen the moment permit is issued. That's not when the apartment is released. It takes time. So we got to forecast our future inventory into this as we're helping investors buy properties. And so um, Rosie, I think that's actually uh, a perfect reason why looking at multifamily is a good idea right now. Yeah. Uh, because if you're looking at three or four units, um, mm -hmm. that's pretty much a small apartment complex. And, yeah. And um, if you'll go back up one second, hold on. Sorry. Okay. Um, so this is talking about the apartment uh, apartment inventory that's been in the market that's flooded the market, or you know, we're we're talking about that now. Now, yeah. listening to senior analysts and Marcus Millichap and the Dallas Fed and all these people talking about multifamily and how it's flooded the market. Uh, when you listen to these people in depth, what they're saying is that these apartment complexes are are going to slam on their brakes. Anyone that was thinking about entering that market is now having second thoughts because of the saturation of apartment complexes. So if you, if, if what happens, if everybody stops building apartment complexes, you see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's, it's constant. I mean, if you've seen several cycles, Rosie, you've seen this happen before and uh, you see what happens when they stop building homes and we have an inventory shortage. That's what caused the 2008, the 2008 economic collapse is exactly what caused the tightening of homes that we're experiencing now. So if they're going to stop building apartments, what do you think is going to happen here in the near future? It's yeah, it's, it's like supply likely. and demand overbuilt of something, then they slam brakes on it, then we have shortage of something. And yeah. if you look at it, we have tight inventories already and high mortgage rates are depressing the existing single family home sales. So the single family home sales is actually in green, right? So if you look at um, single family, but sorry, building permits are in green and the existing home sales are in blue. So if you look at the single family home sales, right, they're going down, but yeah. the single family permits have gone up. It means the sales are down, permits are going up, which means more inventory is coming on the market. But if, if people don't have enough money to build homes, banks are not backing it up. We're going to have a tight, it says tight inventories. You know why we're having tight inventories is because everybody's locked into their four or less percent mortgage. Yeah. So mm -hmm. now if the mortgage rates go back down to 5%, which they're expecting next year, I was looking at the same chart uh, just a, a few hours ago. And I was thinking to myself that the reason why there's tight inventories is because no one wants to list right now. Yeah. And uh, this is like, I want to kind of read it accurately as you guys can relate to this paragraph right here. They're saying there's a discrepancy between the Texas and U.S. house price trends. They're primarily because of the relative ease of home building process in Texas. Permits for single family housing are rising. So what did we see here? The green color, right? Single family home permits are rising. In fact, new home sales are up 20% this year and now account for 22% of all sales in Texas. And Bree, what are our people able to do? They're able to lock in some, where was one of our investors interest rates this past week? 3.99%. And how long he's locked into that rate? 10 years. 10 years, his rate won't go up. And who offered that? Builder. 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 So yeah. existing home sales are down because existing home sales are like, hey, I can't compete with what Builder is giving. Go ahead and buy Builder Homes. I'm going to hold on to my 2.875% interest rate because, mm -hmm. and I think this is like, we have said it so many times, like my mouth hurts, you know, like <laughs> home sales are not going to go. Well, you know what? That's a reality. Okay. Stop sniffing around those properties. Go buy something that is more suitable and just go with the flow. And, you know, I want to say a little thing that I came up with this past week. I tell people now, 
interest rates are on cruise to avoid financial bruise. Ouch. Brie, you said something about Rosie rapping the other week. <laughs> hey, rapping Rosie, here we go. <laughs> well, guys, I am going to share my screen now. Let's see, hold on. Where is the share button? Okay, here we are. I'm just going to run through these, uh, through this. Guys, I want you to know that all this new stuff is great. I'm way more fun. <laughs> Raji left. <laughs> I'm way more fun and now Roger left us. I know he's like all news and stuff. <laughs> he's back. All right, guys, we have more fun than all the news we're giving you. Okay. Rosie, you I feel like you kicked I feel like you kicked me out. <laughs> no, I haven't kicked you out yet, <laughs> but I will. I'm just kidding. Okay, cool. So uh home prices dip slightly. This is where we're seeing, right? Where are they dipping from? They're How dipping did you from get this for documents? This is uh, uh, the Dallas Fed. Yeah, that's exactly where I was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but guys, look at this. This is what I'm really interested in. Look, this is where the dip occurred. And what's happening after that? It's going up. Going up. And uh, so now is your time to buy. If it was going down, I'd be concerned. But it's actually going up, right? And this <laughs> is pandemic levels. So let's, you know, let's take everything with a grain of salt. Now, Dallas, uh, Dallas housing prices are rising. Same story here, right? Same story that they're, they're, they're telling on is there's a sharp upswing here. And so I would look at that more closely and that's really motivating to me. Now, Houston is the only one, this is like, you know, you got good news and you got a little mixed news in here, but, but the, um, the Houston employment dips a little bit. Now, if you look at it, it's still above so the unemployment US. dips. Unemployment dips, yeah. So what does that mean? Means oh, people are okay, okay. Good thing, yeah. Good thing. That's a good thing. Good. That's yeah. a really good thing. <laughs> it's still high. Sorry, hey, sorry, I missed. Hey, can I tell y'all something really funny? Yeah. Um. No, I forgot, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, you sure you're not gonna remember it? Well, I'll interrupt, but uh, I had a really good thing to tell everybody. But Brie, you tell me, girl. I want to hear some money people can invest in. Like, come on, show me the money. Okay, y'all ready for this? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, show us. All right, let me show you this. So, I went out to Round Rock, Round Rock. Okay, Round Rock where there's no inventory, Round Rock where there's no new construction, Round Rock where prices there's are no rock. <laughs> There is a round rock. Have you ever been to the round rock in round rock? No. I'm embarrassed. I'll show you. I'll show I'll show everyone. You come to Austin. Please show everybody, rock. including me. My first time too, guys. It's right there next to the highway, if I'm not mistaken. Is that the one? It's in the water. Oh, in the water. Yeah. I see you don't know either. Oh, wow. So quick like Ouch. Us. So look at this, guys. Brand new construction brand new neighborhood in Round Rock. Let me give some better pictures. This is called Avery Center. Okay. So there's a couple of different types of um, floor plans. Some are going to be like this kind of style, like a row home where you have the garage in the back and there's the alley. Um, actually, all of them are like that. Some are detached. Can I see this one? This is so pretty. This one? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I say pretty because you're getting a brand new construction property in Round Rock where there's no more room left to build. And, and do you want to know this tax rate? Look at this. 1.89. One wow. wow. That's the wow factor. That's the wow factor. And it gets better. Let me show you where this is. And um, just so everyone knows, I sent out an email. You have videos of me walking through four different floor plans. Um, and I actually have a map of the future growth and development of the area. So take a look at that email. If you missed it, reach out to me. I'll send it over to you. But I'm going to show you this. Okay, so this is where you're located. Right here is 79. You're right in between 35 and 130 toll, okay? You're probably about 10 minutes from Del Diamond, 10 minutes from Kalahari. Uh, you have Texas State um, over here and Texas A&M, both campuses, 
uh, smaller campuses wow. right here. And look at this. Scott so, and White is right there. Scott and White is not too far off. Oh my God. Oh yeah, That's Scott and White is right off of here. And now, what's Scott and White for our listeners that aren't aware? Hospital. 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 Yep. And AM, it's a research center. And we didn't plan this. AM Research Center. We didn't plan this. No, y'all didn't know what I was gonna bring you today. Yeah. Um, right here, guys, this is future growth and development of you know how every city is getting, you know, their own miniature domain. Mm -hmm. They have a projection of these spaces that are gonna be like right here. Um, oh. I wish I had the other map. But it explains everything in the video. It shows you where they're going to have some retail on the bottom and maybe some sort of either office space or, um, you know, apartment. Wow, the mixed use we were talking here. about. The mixed use we were talking about. We didn't plan this either. I know. It's going to be walkable. So literally, you're going to be able Ooh. to walk there. There is a future right here is going to be a future high school. And right over oh. here is a future elementary school. So Guys, go to school, eat, have fun, go to high school, go back home. Yeah. This spells and appreciation all day. I have one better for you. So these prices, most of them are, we have some under 400, like a lot under 400. There's some above, but whatever. Um, yeah. They told me, make an offer. No way. They what? said, have, until December 11th, they said, make an offer. She said, put in a low price. Put in closing cost credit. Put in appliance package. We need to we need to close homes before the end of the year. That's exactly what the sales rep told me. Wow. And that's builder, huh? Whoa. Yep. Brand new construction. So. Yeah. I want to take a moment here, and I want to take a moment here and talk about something real quick, right? So I want to have a very open conversation around when people talk about buying investments, right? And um, a lot of people say, hey, you know what? I'm out of state. I have a, I have a builder. I can reach out to a builder. I can make a deal. Um, we can rent out the property. The builder rep told us that you can rent the property out. I really don't need any help in figuring things out. So I'm not going to ruin it for you. I'm going to have Bree share with us on what her trip to Temple, Texas looked like when she was looking at three different types of neighborhoods to help our out-of-state investors invest in. So Brie, would you share with everyone what was your trip experience like when you were checking out three different neighborhoods that your investors were interested in and what were your findings? Yeah, so I actually checked out four. One of them I didn't even put on the list anymore because the area was right by, they were giving the best deals. So I was really excited to visit them actually. Um, but when I got there, they were right by 35, which I thought was going to be a good thing, right? You're right by 35. You have easy access. No, you could hear the traffic. The yeah. qu quality was horrible. The houses were not in great condition, right? Um, but they were offering some really good incentives. It, but I couldn't in good conscience even send that information over because I don't even think it would be a good investment, right? For you yeah. to spend another So you will buy a house with a really good incentive. You get to brag about it. But when it's time to rent the property out, a tenant is not going to like the desirability of that area because they are wanting to have a peaceful good night's sleep after a long day work. Yeah. And when a landlord is not able to rent the property in town, it eats into their return. They're receiving on their down payment every single year. So guys, once again, if you are someone who's looking online, and this is when I, I really get passionate about things, when people are like, you know what, everything is online, everything is online. Well, if everything is online, there are greater chances to make greater mistakes if you don't have boots on grounds. There's a great reason why some of the biggest investors that we are really good friends with, they do not make a deal happen without boots on ground. And these are the multi-state investors. They invest in Florida, California, Texas, New York, they're like, we have boots on grounds there. Why do you think they need boots on grounds when they have bought multi-units after multi-units after multi-units? To understand the local location analysis and demographic analysis and catch the kind of things that Brie has talked about. So I really hope that you guys understood the value you receive by being in proximity with people who are actually day in and day out, 
scrolling through inventory and locations for you. So that's all I have to say today. Okay, I yes. I want to actually share something before we head out. Brittany, did you have anything else that you wanted to add before I uh, go over this one last thing? Nope. <laughs> Except for look at my email. Oh, and no, I do have something to add actually. You know what, next week, Brie, we what we would do is, okay, so a couple of our clients are moving from single family portfolios to multifamily portfolios naturally because there are some really good deals. Unless it's a really great deal, we're not going to ask you to jump on it, right? Now, these multi-unit properties, right? They got this nice offering memorandums, nice profit and losses, right? And they have this nice attractive price. And you're like, man, what a great presentation of the property. What a great location with the great interiors. And when we did our investment analysis on it, we were able to figure out the five-year cash flow analysis and show our investors if they would have even taken a dive on the property and even off, we have been offered 20% price adjustment, they still would have lost money. This is why you shouldn't just go off of what you see online without doing proper feasibility study with real estate experts who are working day in and day out, looking at these numbers for you and who are investors themselves and understand what it means to own one. So guys, I'm gonna leave it to Roger now. I have nothing else yeah. to add. Okay, cool. So guys, I'm gonna share actually a book that are, a really good book that I read. Um, it's by My Michael Gerber. It's the E-Myth Revisited and uh on becoming on being an investor and so he starts he opens up the book with sorry roger could you do yeah. me a favor could you please uh make the text like bigger yes yeah, so everybody can read Does it yeah. okay yeah. perfect so he talks about being an investor and really taking on the identity of an investor because if you don't then you're just going to end up becoming <laughs> on a hamster wheel he calls it the hamster wheel of debt and he realized why a lot of these people are not really accomplishing what they want to and wrote this magnificent book. So I'm just going to go over these 10 points real quick. So every business is a family business. And what he means by that is discussing, pulling your family into it, uh, how you conduct yourself in, in your business is how you're going to conduct yourself at home and vice versa. So if your communication is broken at home, more than likely it's going to be broken in business. So talk to us about what it is that's on your mind and how you wanna grow your real estate portfolio. Um, consider us your family. And so if you could have that transparency and you're able to communicate, we can move the ball forward, right? No, and don't think of it as a business transaction. We're, think of it as you're working with your family because we wanna see you succeed at this. Number two, um, there's three faithful friends, an old dog, an old spouse, and ready money. That's by Benjamin Franklin. So understanding how much money you have set aside and how much you want to employ towards your investment is super critical. I know sometimes we can have money in our accounts and think we have all the money in the world to invest, but I would invite you in planning for the new year to really think about your assets and how you want to employ your assets, how you want to push them into the into these homes that we're discussing and what are your buying potential out there. Number three, Income is most important to employees and least important to the owners. Um, and this just talks about like a lot of the properties that you're looking at, you may be looking at it the wrong way. Use our financial calculators, call Rosie, talk about your internal rate of return, figure out what it is that you're actually making on these, making on these properties. What is your long-term cash flow look like? What is all of these, these numbers that maybe you don't know where to start or what, what it means. Allow us to put it in perspective for you, okay? And one uh, of our clients speaking on that financial return, yeah, we are yeah. actually going into our investor pool and we're evaluating the real estate that they have bought in last five to seven years. One of our clients, um, Brie, we did just did it today. They put $70,000 in a real estate investment. And today, if they sell, sold that property, they will walk away with $270,000. So Bree, what was the rate of return on their money that we calculated today? 30.99%. 30% return on your money. Unheard of. Show me a stock that beats that. That's unheard of. 
So guys, uh, misuse of profit is like never generating any, any. I always hear Rosie talk about this. She says, look, only sell that piece of real estate if you're ready to buy the next one, right? So get, always keep that in mind. Uh, success is learning to say no to a thousand things. That's Steve Jobs. Are you saying no to opening the email? Because that doesn't count. Are, or are you saying no to the specific investments we're sending you? So count those no's up, tally them up. At the end of the year, if you have a thousand no's, you're obviously going to have said yes to a few things. And that's going to determine the level of your success. Um, use annual goals to give meaning to the work that you're doing and weekly goals to drive your, uh, to drive your daily goals. So if your annual goal is to buy X in number of properties, then allow that to set, set your goal. I think Rosie and I had a beautiful experience this week where we were chunking our, we we're planning for the new year and we're chunking everything down from an annual to quarterly, monthly and weekly goals. And I invite everybody to do the same with uh, the real estate that you're planning on purchasing this year. Uh, management is not about managing people. But and about guys, just to interject, fun. Roger and I have this business treaty now. We don't talk in business until we have a focus and action plan in front of us. Here is something that I bet a lot of us do, but they don't. we just don't talk about it. We just pull facts and figures and imagination out of the air and we have nothing to show for. And all of a sudden, your investment conversation might become a fearful conversation and you lost track of the main thing. So understanding how to keep the main thing the main thing is even more important for us as spouses in business. So if we don't have our focus and action plan in front of us, we don't have a morning coffee together. So we're that serious about our business. So imagine if you're that serious about our business, how seriously we take your investments. Yes, absolutely. So number nine is management is not about managing people, but about managing a process. I see Rosie smiling. Um, anyways, look, you want to manage the process. What's your process on working with us? Have you determined what your process is? Um, so give Rosie or give Brittany a call, talk to them, set up your process today. How many properties are you going to look at? How many are you going to say no to before you say yes? And lastly, who's your team? And uh, just get really clear about these. If you need these, I can forward them to you. And uh, Rosie, Bree, I'll send it back your way. And anybody have anything to add? Okay, perfect. Awesome. I love the book. I'm still reading it. I took a lot of takeaways from it. And I'm sure, you know, aligning our minds, mindsets with investing I know we're sending you these beautiful properties all the time. And if you're not acting on it, then figure out what's getting in the way and reach out to us. We'd love to help you with that. Don't make it just your goal alone. You're muted, Rosie. <laughs> I said, all right, guys, have some fun with this and uh, listen to this on your drive to work, you know, and uh, tell us what we can do to make it more fun and more exciting for you all. But yeah. we, this is our way to stay in tune with the market, continue to grow, bring fresh information to you. So when you ask us where to invest, where to buy, we know exactly where to take you guys. Hey, like, subscribe, and share. Let us know what we could do to make this uh, more meaningful to you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye. Right. Bye. And hit that little bell. <laughs> yes. Hit the bell. <laughs>